In this online lecture, we're going to talk about how to name amines. And an amine has this functional group right here. Sometimes it's NH2, sometimes it's NH, or sometimes it's just N. We'll look at those examples in a few minutes. And one thing I'd like to mention here is that before you watch this lecture, make sure you've watched the nomenclature of ethers and alcohols. That'll make this a lot easier simply because we use some of the methods that we used in ethers and alcohols to name amines. So let's start here with step one. We need to find our longest chain that contains the carbon that has the amine. That's kind of like with alcohols, remember? So that means this is the longest chain right here. And since that's four carbons, our parent name so far is butan, but since this is an amine, we put it in the parent name. So this is now called butenamine. This is also similar to alcohols in the sense that that's how much priority amines have. They actually go into the parent name of the molecule. So that brings us to step two here. The correct numbering, in this case, we want to do from right to left. Again, just like we saw in alcohols, we want the amine to be on the lowest number carbon as possible. That brings us to step three here. This is the point where we kind of treat the NH2 as a substituent. Here he is, but we don't label him as a substituent. Instead, we work our way to step four, and all we have to do to finish this off is put a one in the name here. So this is one butenamine. And again, think about what the name is telling you about this structure. Buten means four carbons. Amine means there's an amine group and one is telling us on which carbon of the alkane is the amine on. However, let's look at some sample problems to see some of the nuances of naming amines. Now careful, if you're on your orgo test and they give you this molecule and they ask you to name it, the first thing I'd like you to do is kind of expand it out here. This really is this right here. So let's look at this structure instead. This brings some clarity to the molecule and helps us better name it. So for step one here, notice I have carbon groups on both sides of the nitrogen, kind of like with the ether when you had alkyl groups on either side of the oxygen. And remember with ethers, we pick the carbon chain that's longer. And in this case, you got a three carbon chain on the left, a one carbon chain on the right of this nitrogen. So that means this is the longer chain which means he makes up part of the parent name of this molecule. He's three carbons long, so the parent name here is propenamine. That brings us to step two here. We want to get the correct numbering here, and of course, in this case, we'd want a number from right to left so that the nitrogen could be on the lowest number carbon here, in this case, carbon one. That now brings us to step three. Let's circle and label. Technically, the only real substituent here is this methyl right here. So we're now ready for step four. And watch what happens here. Here's what we're learning. In order to call out that methyl substituent, notice he's connected to the nitrogen. He's not connected to any of the numbered carbons in the main chain. So the way we express this in amines is we say N-methyl. Think about what that means. It's saying on the nitrogen, there is a methyl, and that's exactly what we have. And to finish this name off, we need to put a one here. So the name of this molecule is N-methyl-1-propanamine. And like we've done before, take a few minutes and match the name with the structure. Think about it. If you saw this name, you would think propen. You would think three carbons long. You would see amine. You would think it's some kind of amine. And the one is telling you that the amine is on the one carbon of the propen. Then you would direct your attention to the N-methyl. That would tell you to put a methyl on the nitrogen. Now, just to make sure you got this, let's change up this example a little bit. Let's put two methyls here on the nitrogen instead of one. How would that change things? Well, just use the system here. We would call this molecule NN-dimethyl-1-propenamine. Notice what we're doing here. Instead of calling out the numbers that these substituents are connected to, we're using the N instead of a number. So that's why, remember, if there's two methyls, you have to call out each one by saying N comma N. 
And again, because there's two, that's what the di is for in the dimethyl. So let's look at another example here, and let's throw a halogen in and see what happens. Step one, remember the amine, just like the alcohol, has priority here. So you want to find the longest carbon chain that has the amine, and that would be this carbon chain right here. We got four carbons in the box, so parent name is butenamine. Now for step two, the way we want to number the carbons here, of course, is from right to left. So we can get the amine on carbon one and the chlorine on carbon three and have nice low substituent numbers. Which brings us to step three, circling and labeling our substituents. Notice we have the chlorine right here, but we also have this methyl right here. So that makes us ready for step four now. Let's place this all together. Notice chloro comes before methyl in the alphabet, so we should put the chloro first. He's on carbon three. So we have 3-chloro-N-methyl-1-butenamine. Take a few seconds again and connect the name of this molecule to its actual structure.